everyone. It is very sunny. Allergies. So, I cannot even put my contact lenses. I just... I am fresh off the shower and you best believe that I'm soaking up the sun. So instead of grabbing my hair diffuser and whatnot, I'm here. Yeah, basically, um, because I have no internet in here, I cannot work. So basically I'll read uh, this book. But uh, let me just find it for you guys, just so you can see it's a very, very old book. Uh, here it is. Well, that would be perfect lighting for filming, only that the... Wow, that's beautiful. Let's see how I'm looking here, though. Talk about good lighting. Did I just found a... <laughs> this might be a good studio, but it's a roof. <laughs> Anywho. Ah, oh, come on, the curtain. You guys, this book. Um, both my grandparents read this. This is from one of them and this is printed in 1941. The original one is for the early 1900s and in Spanish is El Terrible Mr. Graham by G. Horace Larimer. In English is Letters of a, Mer of Letters of a Merchant to His Son. If you want to learn how to navigate through life properly, not just in business. This is a very good book. And it's not just um, business, business, like, I know, it's kind of books like, um, I would have put this, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, for instance. No, this is like letters from Mr. Graham to his son, who's in at the uni, and uh, it's a fantastic book, dare I say. I am thinking, you know, because I'm not monetized, <laughs> I am thinking uh, about creating this video clip because, um, so here's the thing. I was out and about and there was this man who is retired, he's older than my parents, and uh, he inquired who I was. And so I am the youngest in my family. And so um, I said, it, well, I am the daughter of so-and-so, but the young daughter. And he looked at me up and down and he was like, well, not so young. <laughs> and that really rubbed me wrong, even though I am well aware. I think at times I am not aware of the age of I have, because inside it's like my father, he's 72 and he, and he feels like, 40 or 50 and he acts like it. It's not like he acts like he if he were younger, but he doesn't surely doesn't dress like an elder man and uh, certainly he is fit and he looks appearance wise and thoughts wise he is way younger. I don't know if I inherited that from him, genetics, whatever, but I don't feel my age. And so every now and then it hits me, <laughs> you know, when I get comments such as this. It was a long time ago, uh, back when I was 22, one girl, poor thing, she approached me, I bet she was 15, 14, 15. Um, that was back in Barcelona and, and she talked, she addressed to me as if I were an older lady. Uh, because here we differentiate between you, uh, that it's you, tú, and uh, usted, that it's you as a respectful manner, that you refer to the elder and the people that you respect, right? And so she came to me speaking like, usted, and he was like, oh my God, you know, I'm not even 25 and I'm already with this usted kind of thing. But um, then you get to, you grow to accept that and everything. But then um, with all this COVID stress and whatnot, um, along came a gray on my hair. I know I'm fortunate, you know, so many people, uh, way younger than I am, <laughs> have a full set of grays. Uh, like, I don't know, my brother-in-law, uh, when he was in his early 20s, when he was 24, he already had a full uh, gray hair, full head of whites, actually. And I don't know, it's genetics, you cannot pinpoint it or whatever. But I got a little bit of a crisis and after 
that and instead and the the usted the grace and that older man telling me well not that young i've been like okay and i started to listen like it popped to my head like i have songs for every occasion like my i have a big a, a library probably bigger than spotify in here whatever um and and so it popped in my head the, the theme song from the TV show from the 80s from BBC, The Young Ones. Once in every lifetime, comes a love like this. Oh, I need you, you need me. Oh, my darling, can't you see, young ones? And it's so good, it's such a good song, and it's such a good show. And needless to say, I wasn't old enough. <laughs> when that show was on air. But I have an older sister, so you best believe that she taped all the shows and she would watch them over and over. And there I was being super, like this small, like to my knee or something like that, super young, and watching the young ones because that's what my older, my sister would do. And then when I was older, I got to, I, I came across back when I was in my early twenties, once again, I came across the DVD set of the entire series and I purchased it and I rewatched it and it's hilarious. So what I wanted to say is that if you get the chance, I think like uh, British shows have a drier, darker sense of humor. And this is a sense of humor that suits me best as opposed to this other kind of humor. So it's like smart, uh, dark, sarcastic humor kind of. And it, it, I really do enjoy that. So if you're into that, that's all to say that if you're into that, I highly recommend that you try and find the young ones if you haven't seen it yet. And also that is a bit darker, but it's also humor. The League of Gentlemen. You are in for quite some treat. I know for instance, if Shannon, if you're watching this, uh, that you like darker books and whatnot, that's some very dark dark humor so and all of you guys if you get the chance to find it online certainly it has to be somewhere the league of gentlemen it has several seasons i think at least two and there's this dark dark humor is the this group of humorists by yeah english humorists and um yeah it's like they live in this small town and this is like even the shop owner like this is a local shop for local people and whenever a foreigner enters the town they become so scared and they all become suspicious and there are these freaks around town and even like the jobs the job seekers uh teacher lady she's like she has all these quirks and there's it's it's very and, and the butcher and even the prostitute, it's so funny. It, it's very dark, it's very dark humor. It's not for all audiences, but if you're into that, it's so funny, I highly recommend that. And the young- I'm seeing an eagle. I wish I had a good camera right now, so just so I could film it and show it to you, because I, if I just turn there, you're gonna see nothing, or maybe just a spot, but an, an eagle is flying around here. Probably she's hungry, but you know, ancient meta ancient mythology says that eagles are a good sign, a good omen, so I'll take it as a good thing. Anyway, as I was saying, back to the track, um, the Young Ones is a group of uh, a punk, an anarchist, a womanizer, a hippie, and I think that's it, uh, that live on a rented flat or a rented house, a uh, semi-detached house, I was actually in London in the 80s. And yeah, they're, they're roommates, they're studying at the uni, and they're very particular characters. Characters, and they're so funny, so quirky, and to each, every, every single one, you, can, you will find your, the, the one that best suits you, kind of. To me, it's always been Vivian, the punk one. <laughs> Honestly, whenever anything explodes in this house, it's always blind Vivian! <laughs> and it's so... Oh my god, but they all... It's, they are so different, and they all live together in the way that they... Uh, 
navigate through life and it always it, everything happens into that apartment but at times like in here for instance they're here and something's happening is a tv show and then they enter here and all of a sudden it's not the closet any longer it's a magical world with fairies as if you were on some kind of weird trip it's very funny and yeah it all of this came to me in my mind i haven't thought of that in years and years but after that elder man <laughs> he told me old fart basically uh that song popped in my head the theme song from the young ones and so i, I just came here you know just to soak up the sun a little read a little bit reread a little bit uh letters from a merchant to his son by once again how is it? by g horace Lorimer. always forget the name of the author and just to dry it, to, to dry my hair. So we're hanging out basically. But I really wanted to share with you this book that I think is a fantastic one. It's a good read. This regard my nails is what happens when you paint your nails with cheap nail polish. It had yellow and now it looks like they have fungi, but it's just, just leftovers. Like I cannot get rid of that until my nail grows once again. And yeah, I wanted to show you this book and talk about these two series that I think they are fantastic and at a point in time they were very popular but nowadays they are kind of a hidden gem so I think if you are um, from another country than I am or from away from Europe you might have not heard of them and if you're younger certainly you haven't and I think it, they are well worth a watch as well as this is well worth a read so you never know you don't have to be on top on top so anyway words from a millennial, right? So I hope you're having a great day. Love you. See you. Bye.